I welcome everybody who is interested in science and today I will briefly overview five amazing scientific news that were released this week. Completely new stuff, links to the original publications are in the description below and we're gonna start right now. The fifth place is taken by the novel insight in the working mechanisms of our visual perception. What are we talking about? Today we are surrounded by pictures, they are everywhere, books, screens of our devices and of course their size differ from miniature to huge ones. When we see an image we can recognize the meaning regardless of the size of the picture, right? So until now it was believed that the size itself doesn't um, affect how firmly the related information is stored in our memory. But the recent paper published by the research group from Toronto challenged this idea. So let's take a look on the experiment that has been done. Scientists suggested that the size of the image determines a number of retinal receptors involved in the image processing. A larger picture covers a larger area, which in turn stimulates more neurons in the brain. As a result, the entire visual system requires more resources to process such image. But will it affect our memory? I mean, the visual processing is quite an exquisite process, involving recognition of uh, patterns, shapes, forms, familiarity, etc. And from the first glance, the size doesn't look like a major factor. But let's refer to the data. Researchers conducted experiments with volunteers, who were shown pictures of different sizes. But without warning in advance that the task was to memorize them, therefore mimicking the real-life situation when we just uh, passively observe the surroundings. A total of 182 people took part in the experiments. So what were the results? The participants memorized large images on average one and a half times better, regardless of the nature of the image, the order of demonstration, resolution and other factors. What is even more surprising, can you guess what has been memorized better? A blurred large picture or a small clear one? When we take exactly the same image, apparently a blurred one. So here we can finish with a quote from Justin Hammer. Size does matter. Don't let anyone tell you different. On the fourth place, we have a paper related to COVID. Scientists from California discovered abnormal immune system activity indicative of neuroinflammation several months after the recovery. There are new and unexplained complications of COVID-19 that are present even after mild illnesses. So let's take a closer look on this paper. One of the post-COVID effects is so-called uh, cognitive fog. It is reported by some uh, COVID-19 patients after their recovery and includes subjective description of some changes in their thinking process. Namely, the thinking becomes uh, sluggish, fuzzy and not sharp, as if you kind of uh, stare through the fog. You don't have to be on a ventilator. You don't have to be hospitalized. You can have long-term effects. And brain fog is a prominent one, very commonly seen. One in three people have this kind of symptom complex. You can't focus. You feel tired. Your memory has uh, declined. The present study involved 17 people who had been ill with COVID-19 in a mild form and recovered about 10 months before the start of the experiment long time passed. Uh, despite the mild form of the disease, 13 volunteers out of 17 had prolonged symptoms of cognitive fog. The remaining four people uh, served as a control group. So researchers focused on cerebrospinal fluid of these participants, shortly named CSF. Uh, it is a fluid that surrounds the brain and spinal cord. It cautions the brain and spinal cord from injuries and also serves as a nutrient delivery and waste removal system for the brain. After evaluating the participants' cerebral spinal fluid samples, scientists found abnormal immune system activity, namely elevated levels of certain antibodies and proteins that indicate neuroinflammation. So no similar signs were observed in the control group. It is possible that the immune system stimulated by the virus started to function in a pathological way, attacking its own body, making some damages, which then resulted in the cognitive fog. One of the examples of such damages can be, uh, for instance, uh, microvascular damage altering the blood supply in the brain. Combining these findings with an early work from the researchers from Yale that explicitly showed on mice that COVID-19 can infect neurons, it becomes more and more clear that COVID not just affecting our physical condition, but can alter the mental health as well, irrespectively of the severity degree. So please follow the precautions to avoid the further spreading of the COVID. We are coming to the third place and let's uh, get a bit to the technical sector, to artificial neural networks. 
Meta, also known as Facebook, has developed a supercomputer with integrated artificial intelligence, which is positioned as the fastest in the world. What makes this event special is that to train neural networks, you need to have training sets. The more, the larger they are, the better. And here, Meta has a great advantage. And access to Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp data. Imagine what one can achieve combining these sources of information together, especially taking into account that some people use all of these nets. According to the release, one of the goals is to create better AI models that will determine whether the published content complies with existing rules and regulations. Hopefully, Meta will not misuse user personal information. No, 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 of course not. The company wants to finish the construction of a new computer in the middle of the year. This work will also pave the way to the uh, creation of the technologies for the so-called metaverse introduced by Meta, uh, in which age-driven applications and products will, pay, uh, will play uh, an important role. Uh, what is also remarkable is <laughs> that the design of uh, this highly complex, state-of-the-art, high-tech project was done remotely, and the meetings were done online. I think what I'm most proud of is doing this with the team completely remotely. I mean, it is, it is insane that you can do this without ever meeting anybody, like the level of complexity. Let's see where it goes and finish this place uh, with a wise phrase from one film. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. On the second place, we have news from North America, where biologists from the US have learned how to grow lost limbs in frogs. The regenerated cocktail of proteins allowed the animals to replace amputated limbs with new ones in a year and a half. Scientists used a bioreactor named Biodome, which is a small cap made of from layers of silicon and spider silk placed in a water-saturated hydrogel. Uh, plus, biologists added uh, a specially formulated regenerating cocktail to it. It included five signal peptides that stimulated the formation of so-called blastema at the amputation site. Blastema can be viewed as a mass of stem cells that ensure the restoration of lost body parts. In addition, these molecules prevented scar formation and reduced inflammation, facilitating the growth of new bones, muscles, blood vessels and nerves. So let's see how the experiment has been done. Animals were given an anesthetic and limbs were amputated. Then the animals were divided into three groups. In one, the remaining part of the limb was put into bioreactor supplied with regenerated cocktail we just discussed. In the second, the reactor was used without the cocktail and the frogs from the third group served as controls and didn't receive the treatment. As the scientists expected, regeneration occurred only in the first group and in animals from the other two, the place of the lost limb was overgrown with um, unstructured tissue. Remarkably, 18 months after the amputation, animals from the first group grew nearly full-fledged new bows with finger-like structures at the end. As you can see in the published video, the frogs uh, successfully used these limbs for actions, such as swimming, and they felt when uh, the limbs have been touched. Anatomical studies have also shown that the bones, blood vessels, nerves and the legs uh, form close to the, uh, to the normal state for these animals. Uh, the limbs were uh, slightly shorter than usual, but the researchers noted that growth was still ongoing at the time of the study. It is possible that over time they can reach the desired size. The experiments were considered completely successful and in the future the authors plan to move on to experiments on mammals in order to find a technology that will allow scientists some, at some day the restoration of lost limbs in humans. Yeah, I mean, hopefully they will not name it AAM <laughs> as, in, as in Iron Man 3. And in the first place, uh, the breakthrough that has already become a world sensation. A robot successfully performed a complex medical surgery on a living organism without human help, completely independent. For now, on pigs. So, smart tissue autonomous robot named STAR performed a laparoscopic surgery to connect the two ends of the intestines in four living pigs. Connecting uh, the two ends of the intestine is a challenging procedure in gastrointestinal surgery, uh, requiring the surgeon to suture with great precision and consistency. Even slight hand tremors or an improperly placed suture can lead to failure, which can in turn cause fatal complications. The great challenge for robots to perform such soft tissue surgery is caused by potential unpredictability during the surgical process. Thus, the robots need to adapt their actions to handle unexpected obstacles. 
To manage with it, engineers develop a novel control system that STAR robot can use to adapt the surgical plan in real time, similarly as surgeons do during the operation. According to a paper published in Science Robotics, the robot excelled at this procedure, which requires a high level of precision and repetitive movements. Uh, furthermore, uh, scientists added that the robot surgeon produced significantly better results compared to human surgeons. This uh, breakthrough is another step towards the day when a fully automated surgery can be performed on patients. Um, um, here I can recall a message from Jeff Hinton that said uh, that we should stop training radiologists uh, because neural nets outperform them. Jeff, perhaps a similar question, uh, if you may. What, what do you think is the most exciting work uh, to come? Okay, so, um, oh, sorry. Um, let me start by just saying a few things that seem obvious. Um, I think if you work as a radiologist, you're like the coyote that's already over the edge of the cliff, but hasn't yet looked down, so doesn't realize there's no ground underneath him. Um, people should stop training radiologists now. It's just completely obvious that within five years, um, deep learning is going to do better than radiologists because it's going to be able to get a lot more experience. This has been said in Machine Learning Conference in Toronto in 2016. I wonder if uh, Mr. Hinton could imagine back in the days that um, at the beginning of 2022 we will talk um, not about optimization of medical image recognition, but already about a robot doing a surgery on its own. Uh, will it be the beginning of the end of human-based medicine or governments will manage to find an optimal balance? So what do you think? I mean, here we can probably pause the music like this. And that it should be, should be the moment like this as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, allowing all notifications to be informed about new, cool, breathtaking scientific news. Also, if you know cool recent papers published around the time of the release of this video, feel free to post them in the comment section below. Every comment will receive a response. And for now, I hope to see you soon.